Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the junior welterweight division. This bout scheduled for six rounds. Once again, the referee is Frank Cappuccino. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the Kronk gold colors and weighing 139 and one half pounds. He's from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. Undefeated as a professional, four and oh, three by knockout victory. Ladies and gentlemen, Marlon Troubleman Thomas. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing an even 140 pounds from Trenton, New Jersey. His professional record, four and four, two of his four victories by KO. Introducing Paul Brickhouse Denard. Good evening, gentlemen. I gave you your instructions. Both of touch gloves. Both of touch gloves return to your corners. Thank you. So here is a look at Marlon Thomas, who has come in here pretty dry. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But he's 4-0 with three knockouts, so he's done everything right to this point. Paul Denard in the other corner. Four up, four down with a pair of knockouts. Okay, but you have always talked about a fighter who comes in here without appearing to have done much warming up. And that is the case for Marlon Thomas. Well, a lot of times these young men step into the ring without really warming up. And they become more susceptible to take a shot and go down. And it doesn't really have to be a hard shot. It's just a surprise punch. The camp of Marlon Thomas thinks very highly of him. In fact, they, they believe that he is like uh, made from the mold of Thomas Hearns. Now out of the Kronk gym, Daniel Stewart in his corner. A man who knows from whence he speaks. I think about Denard, it is, at least it looks like he's in shape. <laughs> he looks, appears to be uh, stronger of the two, but we have not seen that. One thing about Tom is, Tom is using his jab, keeping his hands high. Typical punk fighter. Counter left hand, and that got Denard to hold on. Not sure if he hurt him. You know what he did? Very smart, Barry. He jumped right on his man. Had Denard in a little trouble and stayed on top of him. And Denard still seems to be in a little trouble. Holds on again. I thought maybe he was just off balance, but he definitely hurt so. him. It was a short left hook. Uh, come on out again. Come on, fellas. Come on. Jumped on him again. And what Thomas will learn down the road as he, you know, gain more and more experience is when you hurt a guy, you just don't jump on him. You take advantage of it, but you set your man up. Don't throw wild shots. Don't waste any punches. And a big right hand, and down goes Denard. Almost went right into my orange juice here. I hate when that happens. Denard may be bigger and stronger, but he doesn't have the chin. And with Thomas, I mean, Thomas throws his right hand, but he's, he's yet to pronate that, and turn that glove over, turn that hand over. I break, break, come on out, come on out. Thomas looks like a guy who probably could stand to put on a little bit of weight, of upper body strength too. Right hand by Denard. Watch the way that Thomas throws his right hand. It's kind of a slapping uh, punch. It's not really solid. His left hook is far more uh, sharper and damaging. He also needs to keep that tongue in. He's my Michael Jordan. Thomas needs to yeah. something. End of the first round and pretty big round for Marlon Thomas. Long way back for Paul outside. Denard. You don't want to be outside. You're outside, you hear me? I don't want you outside. I want you moving your head and throwing them hooks. Now, see, I want to see three or four punches coming. You're going one punch and stepping out, one punch and throwing out. I don't want to see that no more, right? You hear me? Hey, House, you took a shot. You took the best shot. This is it now. This is your round now. You lost the first round, okay? Come back, House. You got to move your head and get inside to that body. What are you hesitating for? You hear me? Don't hesitate, House. You hear me? Don't hesitate. I want to see a bus right now. Well, Thomas demonstrating his power. Short left hook, timed perfectly. Puts Denard to the canvas. It really rocked him. It's a good, beautiful shot. And then he comes with the right hand. 
And in fact, he took advantage of the opportunity and accommodated him with another right hand that puts him down once again. Back of the ear. It counts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it still counts, Barry. Get busy, Hans. Oh, yeah. Believe me, I wasn't denigrating. In fact, that's a punch that really rings your bell, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. And in Denard's corner, they were telling him, you got to get inside. Easier said than done. Well, Denard didn't do anything in the first round. Thomas did more than enough. Well, you can see how busy Thomas was. I mean, 40% of his punches landed. He's far more aggressive, throws better punches than Denard. I mean, Denard, like you said, it was a good observation, bro. He looks like a bodybuilder. That doesn't always cut it in boxing, no. does it? <laughs> the muscles don't punch. Looks good in the pictures, though. Denard with a lunging left hand. I mean, these, the punches that Denard is throwing is not really punches by the book. And that's why Thomas needs to be careful. When he throws his punches, bring those hands back up. Now, what do you do with it? He is really, Denard is really crouching way, way low. What do you do with it? Got like that, just punch down at him. The jab, no, no, because with Thomas, keep that jab in his face. Every time he throws his jab, it blinds him, keeps him off balance. And see with Denard, he's trying to rush his way in, using both hands, turning southpaw, switching up. He's off balance. Both feet are put uh, together, so it's easy to knock him off balance with the left jab, a simple left jab. And Denard just lunging in now, not utilizing the jab to get in at all. I've seen a lot of guys get knocked out this way. I'm speaking of Thomas, man, the way he's standing up there, it's like he's inviting one of those looping punches by Paul Denard. He should be jabbing right now. He's just looking to load up. Exactly what you were saying, Ray. You can't, you know, a lot of young fighters have a tendency to wait for that one big punch. They think they're a knockout artist, and they look for that one big punch. And you can see Thomas still doing that. Just looking to load up with the right hand. And I'm sure you don't hear Emmanuel he Stewart tell Thomas, use that jab, box your man, keep him off balance. All right, stop punching, Thomas. Come on. A better round for Denard. Winging right hand just missed. Just uh, missed. Great, fellas. Come on, come on out. That's what scares you. Or scares the trainer. End of round number two. And a much better round for Denard. We'll be back. Dropping on the corner of Marlon Thomas and Emmanuel Stewart doing exactly what you suggested, saying you're making this fight tougher than it has to be. You just have to utilize the jab. And this was, and he, in fact, Thomas now is trying to throw his jab, work his jab, brother. Because he's allowing Denard to back him up. And you, you said Thomas didn't do anything, and Thomas didn't do anything. Only threw 24 punches, only landed eight. Actually, Thomas was just waiting, just waiting for some apparent reason, which I think is just for land one big punch. For Walter White, it's not too many punches in a three-minute round. With the fighter, with fighter of the style of, of Paul Denard, backing him up, too, would be a plus for Thomas. Because these kind of guys, guys that are sluggers, cannot fight backing up. And you'll notice that right hit good shot to the body by Thomas. And he took a right hand from Denard. Right now, Thomas is really letting Denard dictate the fight. He's letting Denard get into the fight also. That was another thing that Manny Stewart said between rounds is you give away one more round and you got problems. This is a six round fight. Could make a case for the first round being a 10-8 round, probably was. That was such a, a, a bad move, a dumb move when he threw an uppercut from the outside. 
I think this young man, Marlon Thomas, has a lot of talent, natural talent, but he, he must be more aggressive, too. And a big right hand. Those are the kind of punches that uh, normally make or turn the tables around there. And another right hand from Denard. That rocked and Thomas. It, and it did. It put Thomas, Thomas in a little trouble. He's hurt. And Denard should jump on him right now. Long way for Thomas to go in this round. And he will. You'll notice that uh, Denard is steady being aggressive. Moving hit straight ahead. He blocked that counter right hand from Thomas. Thomas is still a little woozy. Great. The tables have turned, Barry, mainly because Thomas does not use his jab or his height advantage. And they are ripping right hands. They're not pretty, but I'll tell you what. One punch again by Thomas. You're going to hear a lot of instructions given from Emmanuel Stewart because this is not Emmanuel Stewart uh, theory on boxing. End of round number three, a very good round for Paul Denard. It's allowed Denard to get back to the fight. In fact, he only threw 12 jabs and only three landed. And I'd be willing to bet 10 of those jabs came in the first 20 seconds of the round when he was doing what Emmanuel Stewart said. Well, what's happening, he is not that busy. In fact, let me retract that. He only threw 12 jabs in the third round. Thomas did. And that's not going to get it done. He's allowing Denard to get inside. Denard's corner is very happy with his, with his uh, performance that round. But they want to see him go to the body a little more to bring those hands down. And he was getting to the body. He's doing a pretty good job going to the body in the last round. And still Thomas not using the jab. The numbers from the third round, Denard busier, more effective, won the round. It's that simple. That was the key word. Denard was busier of the two. Look at the punches now. I mean, he's subjecting himself, Thomas is, to being hit by one of those different punches. Whenever you have a guy, a young guy, with good boxing, natural boxing skills, you need, you need to reinforce those, make him use that. Because this fight could be a lot easier for Thomas. But right now, it's pretty easy. Yeah, you can make a case for Thomas having won the first round 10-8. I think he probably did. Second round was fairly close. I know you gave it to Thomas. Could have gone either way. And Denard clearly won the third round. Right hand by Denard again. And of the two, Thomas looks more tired. My turn, my turn. Be first, Tom. Be first. Go with the one. Get off on you. Yeah, I got a little right here. Those kind of punches thrown by uh, Marlon Tommy, there, they do no damage whatsoever. Slapping punches, the right hand. The jab is the key punch for him. The jab has virtually disappeared. see Thomas flinch a little bit from those body shots by Denard. He did a good shot. Denard may not have the best style, but one thing about it, he makes whatever, he, whatever style he has work. Coming down to the end of the fourth round, another close round, another difficult round to judge. Denard and Thomas, and the fight's close. Fifth round scheduled for six, and it's a fight right now, Ray, that you really have the ideas up for grabs. It really is, and that uh, was apparent in Thomas' corner. Emmanuel Stewart was just totally insisting that Thomas use his left jab and not look for one punch. Very, very close through four rounds. Look at those numbers. Well, this also indicates that Thomas allowed Denar to get back to this fight and to make him fight his fight, right? which is inside. 
it's not to say that Denard is exactly putting on a clinic either, because he's not using his jab to get inside at all. Well, you know, uh, 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 because of the style that Denard has, he did, really doesn't use his jab to get inside. He bobs and wee, bobs and wees, and he, he's, making it, he's making it work, Barry. But I'm somewhat uh, disappointed and Tom is not using this jab. Because again, I spoke with Prince Bird today and uh, from the, from the Thomas camp, and he said this young man has a jab, they just won't quit. Well, it's quit. It's non existent. Look at the left hand. Hook. If Denard had a little more of a faster move, upper body movement, he'll be a tough guy down the road. Because that kind of upper body movement makes it quite difficult for any fighter, especially if they can hit with both hands, power in both hands. That wasn't a bad hook by Thomas. But Denard came back with two. Denar, again, continues to do a little bit more. He's the stronger of the two right now. You see the jab, how effective that left jab is when, when Thomas uses it. But here, again, he tries to load up with one punch. He's been missing that left hook all night long. Another right hand by Denar, and Thomas misses. And Denar goes to the body. Going to go into Thomas's corner and hear what Emmanuel Stewart has to say, and I'm sure it'll be a diatribe. Let's go all out. You got to suck it up and get ready to go this round. You push the fight to this boy and keep jabs in between, you win the fight easy, but you got to keep the jabs in between. Okay? Yeah. You don't let him get set because he loads up with all those alley punches, but you can't let him get set. You got to keep touching him with something all the time, keeping his eyes busy, steadily touching, steadily touching, steadily touching. Load your big shots and then get back to touching with it all the time. But you got to dictate the pace this round. He's tighter than you are, but you got to push yourself. Okay? Don't sit back and wait on him this round. This is it. See how bad you want it. See how bad you want it. Sixth and final round, and I don't know. I'm not quite as confident as Manuel Stewart is. I was surprised uh, how relaxed and uh, nonchalant Manuel Stewart was. I mean, if anything, it's Denon who's making this fight. Look at that. That was a left hook thrown by Denon. And Denard now obviously really thinks he can win the fight. The last round, not a lot of activity on either part, but again, Denard did a little more. And it was Denard who came out on top, landing 38% of his punches. I'll tell you what, though, and I've seen this on so many occasions. The fact is, folks, Marlon Thomas is supposed to win this fight. He's 4 0, Denard is 4 4. And I just say this based on experience that it's very tough for a fighter who's 4 and 4 to win a decision over a fighter who's 4 and 0. Thomas has not been busy, especially with his left jab. I mean, in round 5, he threw 32 jabs, but only 8 connected. Which should tell him something. Well, if Thomas does win this fight, it's probably a fair assessment to say he dodged a bullet. Good body work. Very good body work by Denard. And pity pat punches at the other end from Thomas. Break. 
I don't know why Tom's is turning southpaw. You know, a lot of times fighters do that when they're frustrated. Normally that's the case. That was caught on the gloves. And also, when a guy turns southpaw, you know, the, the worst thing to do is to turn southpaw while you're moving back. You normally turn southpaw when inside. I think Marvin Hagel was one of the few guys that could do that effectively. See, there's no power in the left hand of Thomas once he turns southpaw. Good shot to the body by both fighters, I got. Bernard just missed with that left hand. Thomas was there for it. This is a toss up, Barris. A very close fight. Right, break. Break. Come on, come on I think the scoring could be an adventure. An adventure. I think it's going to be kind of interesting. Another right hand, and Thomas holds on. And this one is over, and it turned out to be a very entertaining fight. It was a good fight. Denard got back into the fight with his style, being aggressive, working the body. His movement punches came in, came into play. And our punch profile dudes, Bob Canovio and Morgan Hobson, say that Denard won that last round. And it's going to be an interesting scoring. It really is. So Thomas waits as you look at some of the scores being tallied. Denard waits and we wait. And there are the total numbers and it is extremely close. But remember the knockdown in the first round which could conceivably and very likely did give Thomas an extra point. So we are just about set to go. Let's all find out who won this thing. Here's Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Merv Griffin's Resorts Casino Hotel, we go to the scorecards. Rick Strange scores at about 57, 56. James Condon scores at 59, 54. And Rocky Castellani scores at 58, 55. For the winner by unanimous decision, still undefeated Marlin Troubleman Thomas. Well, as I said, it's going to be another adventure in scoring. And it was just that. I don't question the fact that Thomas won the fight, but tell me how he won it 59-54 and 58-55. We'll be back to talk with the winner. Right, I have three winners, actually. Sugar Ray Leonard on the right. Ray, you got it. Uh, thanks, Barry. In fact, this turned out to be a tougher fight for Marlon Thomas than expected. Paul Denard all of a sudden jumped into the fight. But one thing about it, Marlon, you did not use your left jab. In fact, Emmanuel Stewart was saying, use the jab. What happened there? I felt sluggish, and like I couldn't get off. I saw him throwing hard shots. Wow. So I didn't want to take no chance of getting caught, so I started trying to throw my hard shots too. And you know, he was thicker and bigger, so I knew he can punch. Well, you know, so, and I was trying to punch along with him to show him that I can punch too. But, and then I saw, I heard him the first round with the uppercut, so I was trying to figure him out because he kept on stooping down real low. And I didn't want to take a chance of breaking in and trying to catch him. So I wanted him to lead with his jab so I could try to catch him with an uppercut. And then I just got... Well, the jab, game plan. Well, when the jab, when he threw the jab, the jab landed was very effective. All of a sudden, you abandoned that. And Emmanuel, I'm sure that didn't please you too well. No, I thought he should have boxed a little more. But, you know, overall, he's still a young kid and his body's maturing. And it's a learning experience. But I, I really would like to saw him jab a little more. But that means it's something we got to work on when we get back. The jab would have made a big difference in the fight. It would have been an easy fight. And the guy was ducking illegally low. I mean, his head was actually below the waistline, which meant it wasn't that much of a target for big punches, which he was trying to throw right hands when it wasn't even open. But my overall, we just had to go and learn from this. Well, there's always room for improvement. Marlon, I guess I'll see you down the road. Keep winning. All right, All right Barry, tough fight, but as usual, it's a learning process. And we see here, both fighters exchanging dynamite shots. Well, it is a learning process, but for, fortunately for Marlon Thomas, it's a learning process that also includes a W. He is the unanimous decision winner, and we still got the main event Atlantic.